This is Nan Teinberg of the Palm Springs Public Library's Local History Project, Prickly Pears, Portraits of Historical Palm Springs. Today I am here with one of Palm Springs' veritable treasures, Henrietta Parker, who next month turns 95 years of age. Henrietta came to Palm Springs in the summer of 1914. Today we are here at Henrietta's residence on Techiva Drive in Palm Springs, and the date is July 16th. 1986. Henrietta, you first arrived in Palm Springs almost to the date 72 years ago. How old were you and under what circumstances I did you I was 22. I would be, would be 23 in uh, August when I came on the 15th of July. And you came uh, without your husband? Yes. In, in, and where uh, did you come from? Pasadena. We had the uh, come across country up into Washington, D.C. 19 and 14 was almost a depression year. It was hard to get work. And so he hadn't got any work, and, and he said he was going back to Oklahoma where he knew he could get work. And I said, well, I'm so close to California, and I have two sisters, so I'm going on down and see them. So I went down to Pasadena where uh, my sister Lily Golf lived, who afterwards came here. Right. Right. And uh, then Sister Zaddy's uh, father-in-law, C.E. Bunker Sr., had, at that time, he owned the water company here and a thousand acres of land. So he was coming down and we came on the Southern Pacific over to Garnet. And uh, an Indian with a horse and buggy met us and brought us across the desert. And you came to, you came to Pasadena from Missouri is originally, is that right? When? Or you came from, pa you, you went from Pasadena, from Missouri to Pasadena, yes. is that, is that right? And then you came Up to Up to Washington. Mm -hmm. And how, how many years before that uh, was Sister Zaddy Bunker here? Uh, um, I'm trying to remember, I think she came in 19 and 10 or 11 because I visit, my father and I visited her in San Jacinto. She lived on a ranch outside of San Jacinto in 19 and 12. And we visited there in 19 and 12. And a little story goes with that. That was the first time I drove an automobile. I'd never driven an automobile. And so um, Mr. Bunker said, we had gone in from the ranch into town to visit his father. and so. Father Bunker, we always called him, <laughs> senior. He said, I want you to drive this car home. And I said, I don't want to drive a car. Well, I'll probably never have a car. I'm going back to Missouri. <laughs> Was that the first time you had ever driven? Yes, 19 and 12. And he just put you in the car? So he, it was a, a four-cylinder, and you cranked it on the side. And uh, when you, so it was five mile out to the ranch, and you had to make a turn. It had a curved driveway. I drove right up to the front door and stopped. All right, I did. All you well, you. <laughs> but I shook the rest of the afternoon. Do everything very well. <laughs> <laughs> I shook the rest of the afternoon, not the car. <laughs> and you were driving over sand, is huh? that right? You were driving over sand. Well, uh, I drove. I didn't drive again then until 19 and 16. Okay. What What were your first impressions when you arrived in this area? Arrived in Palm Springs uh, on the train? Uh, but really, there wasn't much. <laughs> There was so little here, and I was just glad to see the sister, and I hadn't thought what it might be, don't you see? It impresses me more now as to see the change. To see the growth. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't describe to you what it was like then. You couldn't believe it. Two blocks wide and three blocks long <laughs> with the town. And it not began many buildings. The, it began where the uh, little uh, Chinese restaurant is. It was yes, the, the Ah Sing was there. Yes, Francis And then Stevens. it ended down... Uh, well, I guess it was four blocks, maybe, down uh, at Arenas, uh, uh, because the White Sisters owned that property for the library corner, for your right. life, and uh, they didn't own that because that was left by Do Dr. Wellwood Murray. Right. And uh, there was a grapefruit orchard in there. So it was then basically... They, and the Indian reservation, it stopped there on Indian Avenue and went to the mountain. So we said it was two blocks wide and three blocks long. <laughs> How many uh, non-Indians were here? They, were there a few they, white families? Or, they presume that that year, 14 and 15, the season of 14 and 15, we call it, you know, the sure, winter, sure. Uh, that there were 70 people 
in the neighborhood of 70 yes. people, and they were about half Indians and half white. Did you, uh, did you know any Indians oh, at they, that time? They did some work, yes. And, uh, uh, the Indian agent uh, had a family, two children, and they lived in, uh, in the house uh, where the uh, spa hotel is now. Yes. And they had a bad house yes. separated off into four compartments. And you uh, pay 25 cents to go and have a bath. And uh, Were those mud baths? Huh? Were those mud baths? Yeah, just, well, they were not mud. They were yeah. just hot water. Uh -huh. And yes. uh, you pushed, there was a rod there you held on to, and you pushed yourself down the armpits, and when you turned loose, you popped up like a cork. And so you obviously uh, we, we, took we part in down that. there. Uh -huh. And how much did you say? 25 cents. 25 cents a, ba a, a, a bath. bath. And there was a pool outside where people that could swim would go in. I never did learn to swim. But you weren't weren't afraid to uh, not to go in and take, have a bath. Take a <laughs> a, a hot spring bath. Uh -huh. um, going back a little bit, you arrived in the summer. Yes. And uh, what was it like for you it to was, arrive it was, uh, in the hot, summer? But, you know, it didn't bother me because I came out of uh, southern Missouri where it was so humid yes. that. Our hair, we could wring the water almost out of it at night. It was so hot there, and of course there was nothing like an air conditioner. Right, but it didn't strike and you. And so as here it was. Yeah. The thing was that uh, the dry heat, a little breeze came up, so I felt good. So it didn't. It wasn't didn't bother remarkable to you to arrive in in intense uh, heat because well, it. I guess I never thought much about climate then. What did you do the first few months when you arrived? You arrived without your husband, uh, and you just knew Sister Zaddy. Well, he came later, yes. and then he, uh, he had been injured on a train, and uh, he came in on a Friday evening. On Sunday, we took him to Los Angeles and put him in the hospital. But that was that in the summer, or was that later? September. What, what did you do during those few months in the summer? Well, I, I kept house for a month. And Mr. Bunker and Francis, his oh, daughter, yes. because Daddy yes. had become very ill and had gone into Pasadena to get out of the heat. So you, uh, you. I kept house for her, and then. Uh, what uh, would your typical day be like? How did how did you did you uh, serve food? Did, did, were you involved with serving them food or arranging food? Yeah. Where, where did you get get your food? Well, uh, Mr. Lickin had a. Uh, that afterwards had the department right. going on. Right. He had a little, uh, he had the telephone, a telephone from Garnet over here, and uh, with nothing but telegrams came in on it. And he had a little, and the post office yes. in there. And he kept some groceries. And that's where you got the uh -huh. groceries. Uh -huh. Is that where everyone in the village oh, went yes, to get except, groceries? Oh, yes, of course. Desert Inn had tent houses. Mrs. Kaufman yes. had tent houses. And she had five occupied, I believe. And I think they, uh, theirs was mainly brought in on, uh, by truck from uh, Banning or San Bernardino, Riverside, somewhere like that. What about, there was no electricity, obviously. What, oh, no, what, we what didn't did get you? electricity till 19 and 23. You're wonderful for the day. We <laughs> had gasoline or kerosene lamps. Kerosene lamps. And, and, uh, and they would have a kerosene stove in the wintertime, a little wood stove, possibly. You did uh, a lot of caretaking when you first. Huh? You did a lot of caretaking, caring for people when you first yes, came uh, to Palm Springs. Yes, and uh, twenty-five cents an hour. Uh, I was thinking the other day we had a plumber here, and I think they get twenty-five uh, <laughs> uh, thirty dollars an hour. And I thought I taught school a whole month for twenty-five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? Was that in, in Missouri? Missouri? Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, I always had worked, and I don't know anything else but work. I think that's what the uh, only thing bothers me now is because I'm not able to get out and do as much. Well, you always were wonderful with people and got along very well with people. Who were some of the other people that you knew at this early time? Well, in, uh, in I, did I did everything from uh, cooking for them, cleaning the house, Nurse made for Mrs. McManus when she was ill one time, went down and prepared the food and took care of it. Auntie Pearl? And then they asked me to sew. Well, I never could sew, but I tried it anyway. And you probably succeeded. <laughs> and we made, I made $2 a day, and we paid $1.10 a dozen for eggs. 
So all you could do That's was to one, eat. Yes. My husband and Mr. Bunker uh, worked for the same amount of money, anything they could get to do. And you remember the uh, how much you were paid, and you remember the price of eggs in those yes. days, mm -hmm. don't you? I'm going to throw out some landmarks, some names uh, of places, and I want you, if you can remember, to describe them. The Desert Inn, for example. What uh, do you remember the Desert Inn? What it looked like? And uh, what? Well, the, those years, 1450, it just had tent houses there. What I want, I wanted to ask you, what are tent houses? Well, I don't know whether I could. They're just a straight building, and they board built up to window height, about like that. And then there was the uh, screen, and uh, outside of that was awnings, and the uh, it was a canvas roof brought over. I see. So it, there, and and then you could raise those awnings or let them down for light or heat or cold. And that's what the first rooms were uh, like uh, in the desert. Uh, end. My sister had two of them: one for sleeping and one for cooking, and. The one she had for cooking, it had a, an extra top on it that came over, and there was where Mr. and I slept on a bed outside, just under the canvas. So it was, uh, it was not made of hard material. It was made of, of canvas, it was canvas. Ba basically. Mm -hmm. It was like a then modern camping tent. Later, uh, Daddy and I uh, bought the corner there for the MDX was together. Yes, How yes. I come to buy in on it. Yeah. Was, uh, well, that's where her garage was. Huh? That's where the garage was. Yes, that mm -hmm. was where the garage, yes. Mr. Bunker. So, anyway, uh, she came to father and mother were out here from for the winter, and she said, Dad, I can buy this lot here for $400, but I uh, don't have the money. Will you buy it for me? And he said, I'll buy your half, and then Reddy will buy her half. Oh, boy. And buy the other half. And I don't know where he thought I had $200, but I did. Well, they knew you were a sharp <laughs> business lady back then. Then when we, we went back to Missouri through the... First World yes, War and yes. was back there four years. Yes. And she wrote back and said, would I sell it back to her or what did I want to do with it? And so I sold it back to her for $200. Uh -huh. That's why I'm so rich today. <laughs> That's why I made well, my you money. are rich in memories. You really are. I wanted to ask you um, uh, more about the Desert Inn, if you remember. Do you, you didn't swim. Well, do they you remember the, the first? Houses and then she, uh, I have forgotten. Uh, she must have had a bigger one or a building one for, to feed them in. I really, I know that that year, P.T. Stevens then mm -hmm. came and, and bought the, wa the uh, mm -hmm. water company and all, and he built a home back uh, down that street I see. Uh, that I was speaking about I that see. we were on. What was it? On Palm Canyon, you mean? Uh, yes, off of Palm Canyon. Right. And, uh, uh, do you remember the first swimming pool at the the, what? De the first swimming pool at the Desert Inn, the first swimming pool in town? Of course, you didn't swim, so that wouldn't be important. Well, to you. Uh, when I came, uh, uh, Doctor Mrs. Doctor and Miss White were here, yes. Mr. New York White and right. Dr. White, and of course Mrs. Kaufman and Doctor Kaufman, right. and their son. Uh, uh, isn't that yeah. a lot? And George Roberson was her right. son by former Mary. Yes. And, uh, and Earl Roberson? Earl, yes. yes. And uh, uh, Mrs. You, McManus and Mr. McManus. You could almost, I could almost count them up, the 30 that were here, 35. Yes, that's the original 30 or 35 people. About 35. Um, do you remember the Adler Hotel? Was that active? Oh, the active? Adler? Was that yes, active uh -huh. when you were? The uh, Red Front, they called it. Oh. Huh. He, uh, he was a character. What What was he like? Well, I don't know. He, he uh, they were the movie company come in, and he would feed them. And all one time, <laughs> he fed them hotcakes he'd cooked the night before. <laughs> Warmed them up. <laughs> uh, do you want a little story the about him, a little food. incident that happened? Certainly. That the Indian horses were running loose, and they were getting in. Uh, nothing much was fenced, you see. Right. So. Adler had a horse, and they told them all to keep them out, or they would shoot them or something. So one day, they went down one morning down the street toward the mountain where the cemetery is down the oh, Indian sure. cemetery, Absolutely. and the horse had been shot. Oh, so uh, they knew it was Adler's horse, 
So they asked him to come down and take care of it. It was his horse. He didn't go for a day or two, and when he went down, he said, no, it isn't my horse. My horse is skinny. This horse is fat. <laughs> After two days. <laughs> so, uh, and they had a dining room and... Well, a sort and, of a dining room. Yeah, had, yeah <laughs> with warmed over uh, hotcakes. I can't really yeah. remember. It was such a shacky place, it just is. what it was like. Uh, do you remember the Oasis? The oh, Oasis? Mm -hmm. Yes, that, uh, on the corner where uh -huh. the big store yes. is, was Mr. and Mrs. McManus's home. Yes. Right on the yes. corner. Yes. Do you remember uh, the El Mirador? That was later when it, oh, El when it was first opened. Oh, El Mirador was in 28th. Yes. Well, it was they opened up on the yes. uh, evening of the 28th. Right. Oh, you remember that? 1928. Yeah. Was that yeah. a big gala event? Oh, it was. Palm a big Springs? affair. And yeah. Guess how much you had to pay for your dinner? Uh, I have, would have seven dollars. No, that was a lot of money in those days. <laughs> Anyhow, Isn't that they had a grand you place and champagne and all, and uh, <gasps> that was a lot of money in those days. It was nineteen twenty-eight. A, a big evening for me because uh, did you go? My husband had got to where I don't didn't know whether he was going to speak to me again because that day <laughs> I had walked over to a real estate office and and. Uh, I went and seen Mr. Hicks first because uh, Ellis objected to be uh, us doing it. Yeah, Ellis now is I went over to the real estate yes. office and bought the corner of Indian Avenue and Tamarisk <laughs> where we built the apartment house afterwards. So I was elated. <laughs> I didn't have to drink champagne. <laughs> ah. um, do you remember the, the library? Oh, the, yes. When it was first it I was guess, a, I don't plaza? remember when it was first built. You see, there was just a big stone there. No, no. No library when in 1914. Right. It had been well, left. it was for it was first in the plaza area, wasn't it? Was it not? Uh, uh, in that uh, back of where the building is, Miss White had a room. some a home there, as I say, in the orchard. And uh, were the, you the, the block where now is. Uh, was the uh, department show and all that sort yes, of thing in the yes. little church? Yes. But up and up to past north of the department store, uh, the whites paid ten thousand dollars for the rest of the block. I thought <laughs> compared to the prices time. now. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and then uh, later, uh, Miss White then bought uh, the other side for the library, all but uh, a house down on the corner. Uh, for 6500 I know that because my father was offered it to it. Oh my gosh, you do remember so, that. So, thinking of prices. You know your real estate back in the 20s. Yes, and when? I, uh, I was going to ask you later about the White Sisters, but I might as well ask you now. There were three. Huh? Did, did, there were three White Sisters? No, uh, yes, yeah, three. Uh, Cornelia? Uh, one of them married uh, oh, uh, the... Isabella? Uh, the Isabella? Ryder, the girl. Mm -hmm. Isn't that odd? Right. I can't say her name. Isabel. Isabel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and Cornelia and uh, Dr. Gorilla. Gorilla. Right. Uh, did you know them? Oh, very well. well. Oh, very well. What, what were they like? Uh, they were very lovely people, and uh, uh, well, they were just as far as I could see, just ordinary good people, and they were friendly and all Did that. Did Florella practice medicine? Was she a medical doctor? She didn't doctor? practice. She didn't have a license to practice in uh, California. Uh-huh. That's and, interesting. Uh, and when my husband came and was the EO, I, I, I went and asked her if she'd come see it. But she, it happened to be that there was a doctor living at the Desert Inn at that time. Was he So he came, and he was very good, and he immediately said we should go to the hospital in Los Angeles. I see. So, yeah. so they mm -hmm. put my husband on a flat board of a truck and took him over to Garner Station over here. And he... Uh, and this was... And uh, in the baggage coach. Now I went in there with him. And uh, there was a bird dog in there, so... <laughs> and this was what year? Went to the hospital. That was in September uh, 14. Oh, 1914. When he first arrived. He came home. He came... They... He had blood poisoning, and he was there a week when they came in and said they'd have to amputate the leg, and he said, no, came in with two, I'll go out with two if you carry me out. So you spent But in another week we was out. Several weeks in Los Angeles with him, mm -hmm. and you, you came back again. 
Mm. So we came back to back down here. As I say, we bought that. Then in 1915, in the spring of 1915, or January, February, somewhere along, well, he, he built us a tent house, only ours was not made of canvas. He had got some prune wood and mm. shingles and things and made was, a Was yours uh -huh. the first permanent residence? That's my first day? home in Palm Springs. Was it the first house that was not a tent house? No, there were it was, other adobes. It was just one big room. Yes. I wanted to ask you about, uh, you went back to Missouri during the First World War uh -huh. for several years. You went back to Missouri during the First World War. Did oh, the First not? World War. We were yeah. back in Missouri. Right. And then you returned again 1919. in 1919. Really, the la very last mm -hmm. part of it, because, uh, and then uh, uh, and Mr. Parker went to work for Mr. DeMuth. He was oh. doing bill just as a labor. He wasn't a, he's a railroad man. So uh, along came Mr. Hicks. We had met there, but of yes. course there wasn't too many people to meet. Right. <laughs> And he said, I'll give you, he, w he went to work for Mr. DeMuth at $4 a day. And so Mr. Hicks said, oh, I'll give you four and a half. Well, 50 cents is 50 cents. So, so that and was Mr. Alvin Mr. Alba Hicks Dix. said, mm -hmm. I want you to become a carpenter. So he said, get you a hammer and a saw. And so he, he became the best finished carpenter in Palm Springs. That's, that's wonderful. So he got into But the most he ever got was $8 a day. Now they get, uh, what is it, $30 <laughs> an hour? <laughs> I don't know. Your guess is as good as it could be what the traffic will bear, I think, yes. But um, I had been taught by my mother, she said to me, no matter how little you make, if you possibly can, save a little. So that's been me, saving Sam. <laughs> uh, when you returned, you worked at Lickens. I, uh, for how many uh, years? Not, uh, I was in, we returned in 19 and 20, and that spring of 19 and 20, I kept books for my brother-in-law, Mr. Bunker, and right. uh, and pumped gas and put in oil, and didn't change tires, put air in. Were there a lot of cars? No, that came no, in very or, few. Were they most the books. Of, mostly then, out of towners who used the garage? Or were they yes, village, the did garage, village people? Was, uh -huh. Village people have cars at the time. Oh, there was a few. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your working at. Uh, did you work at the? I know you worked at the post office. Yeah, that's Did you also work at the hardware store? I worked at the uh, mainly in the store till later. Yes. Then, uh, mm -hmm. in twenty, uh, uh, well, uh, fall of nineteen twenty, I guess I began to work in the store. What, then, what were the kinds of goods that were sold in the store? Oh, he had groceries, and also mm -hmm. he brought in a little bit of dry goods and things and uh, kept increasing it. Right. And then uh, I was in the post office uh, most of the time later. And what did you do in the post office? I oh, just took care of any of the mail that was like uh, uh, stamping the you letters and, and the window. Clerk. And took care of the window. And uh, in 29, I was fired. <laughs> you know what? I want to hear the that government, story. <laughs> well, uh, before, up to that time, it, it had just been, I don't know what, a uh, little post office, and then he, uh, it became a government post office, and they had the same rules as Navy and Army. You had to be five foot four inches tall, and I was only five two, so they thought my brains were in my height, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a Unfair regulation. <laughs> I don't know. At that time, it you felt pretty told bad you would grow. <laughs> Mr. Parker didn't have too much work. Of course, we didn't feel the depression here, too much of it, except me, till 33. It got pretty bad, 32 or 32. But uh, uh, we had a nice home at that time, up on the Chino Drive, mm -hmm. across from the Lovely. golf course. Yes. and. Uh, we had two nice bedrooms in the bath between. My sister Lily Golf had the golf hotel. It's called El Morocco now. Right. And uh, she had a overflow of people that she sent me up and up that I made two hundred dollars in that fed us. That's wonderful. So you you had enough room to take in extra. We owned people. a home and we had a nice car and we didn't know anybody anything. But we got down to one hundred and fifteen dollars in the bank account and that's kind of slim. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mr. Hicks. I built a home for his son Harold. Yes. And put the Mr. Parker to work. And that was the end of the depression <laughs> for us. 
Right. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, more about uh, Lickens. It was sort of the hub of town for a while. It was uh, the center of town. Lots of people would uh, use the store and the post office. I understand it had the first telephone and telegraph yeah, had, office. Uh, yeah, the telephone, yes, over before every built. So you must have seen a lot of people come and go in and out of the, uh, the store. Well, or was that every later? year they would, more people came to Palm yes. Spring. Yeah. Do you remember the divorce court? The, what? the divorce court was also in Lickens. I read that the di that there there was even a divorce court in Lickens store. No, I don't remember. It must have been uh, later. Later. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, do you do you remember how uh, the first telephone? affected the Palm Springs area, or did not that not? Yeah, you mean in 1925 we got telephones. Did you? Uh -huh. and, did that and it was on Palm Canyon, just above where the El Morocco Hotel is, a little building. Did there. that make big changes in your life, or? Oh, I, I don't know that it did in particular. I presume I, I had a phone, probably. <laughs> 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 and I don't even remember uh, what our rates were then. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you about um, some more names. Uh, you discussed the White Sisters. Do you remember Raymond Cree? Uh huh. Do you remember Raymond Cree? Mr. Cree? Do you remember Raymond Cree? Who I believe was the first principal of the school or one of the first school teachers at uh, no. Stevens? Uh, the. Uh they just, uh, they had cottages, uh, and they, they was a two-story, of course, in the spa, they rented thing, and they had cottages there. I remember keeping, cleaning house from doctors. Oh, I wanted to ask you more about uh, Pearl uh, McManus. Uh, McManus, yes. Uh, well, I, uh, can you describe her, or? She was, uh, Rather, you've seen the pictures of her. Oh, she yes. was a very nice oh, looking yes. person. Yes. She was, uh, I don't know, I like Pearl, but there was too many people didn't. <laughs> and things, well, I she don't was understand a why. Lady. <laughs> but uh, then we had that flood. Oh. I'm trying to remember what year the flood was. It was that uh, washed out the bridge at Talkwitz oh, and all that goodness. sort of thing. Yes, there were a series of and, floods. Uh, mm -hmm. What about Nellie Kaufman? Did you Oh, have she was wonderful. Much dealings with she Nellie She was a wonderful Kaufman? person. I, uh, I can remember seeing Mrs. when I was at the store in places, she would come over and, and Mrs. Kaufman, went, if there was a piece of paper or a stick or anything that is uh, on the street, she stooped and picked it uh -huh. up. And, <laughs> and I remember we, after we had the answer, one time I was out on the front, and she came by and stopped and spoke to me and said, oh, you keep your place so neat. I said, you, you know where I learned that? I got that from a woman, Mrs. Kaufman, who always picked up anything that shuddered. So you were both... Uh, she was a wonderful person. Impeccable housekeepers. <laughs> What about uh, your friend Catherine Finchie? What can you tell mm -hmm. us about Catherine Finchie? Oh, uh, Catherine came in, um, I think it was 19 and 23. I may have that from 22. And father and mother were back on a visit in, and in St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And Catherine was, came out and got on the same train in the same coach they were in. Mm -hmm. and. They got to talking and met her, and uh, she said she remembered so well. Father would bring her water and everything like that. Yeah. So I knew when she came. And yeah. you were friends, huh? You you were friends for for many oh, years. Oh, always from the very beginning. Yes, you know? and still are. Yes. yes. Uh, any stories about the two of you? Huh? Any stories about the two of you over the years? Uh, or did she, she was pretty much involved in her teaching, and oh, of course uh, yes. you had your family, your husband, and your duties. Uh, we used to, uh, in, the, in the 20s, it was a very lovely time in Palm Springs. It wasn't overdone, overcrowded, and of course uh, 
we had no uh, television, didn't even have radio. Right. It, it, yeah. All the, it, and we would meet at homes and take the photograph and and have uh, dances and yes. and potluck dinners That's, and have a grand time. Was Catherine involved in that? Oh yes, uh huh. That's lovely. And then yes. after they built the. Uh, Francis Stevens School, it is called, where now the senior citizen and all. Right. Why right. we had the auditorium at times. And no, that was sort of the. And Earl Street, mm -hmm. had the first moving picture in that auditorium. And that was sort of the hub of, of town, wasn't it? That was a busy place where people. Yes. Yeah. Did Did you go there often? Did you go for entertainment to oh, yes, Francis Stevens School? Mm -hmm. I understand there were a lot of celebrities who also just joined in. Who, well, I, I didn't know too many celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were people who made their home in Palm Springs and oh, yes, uh, enjoyed uh -huh. uh, enjoyed going well, yeah, over I there had to them come the dances for guests of mine at the Danza and things like that. Um, how about Sister Zaddy and Sister Lily? What what was Zaddy like? Oh well, <laughs> Zaddy was really. There wasn't anything undertaken that she didn't try to do. That's right. She was a um, automobile mechanic. They didn't have a hoist, you know, to raise cars up. They had a pit they dug, and they put the car over a pit. Mm -hmm. She'd get down in and repair cars, and she did a lot of driving for people, their cars. She was the first chauffeur uh -huh. in, uh -huh. in town. And then uh, she was a much bigger woman than you. Huh? Much. She was much taller and larger oh, yes, than she you. Was, uh, yes. Uh, what I think she was five six, and Sister Lily was five four, and I was five two, and I've lost two of them now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wear it well. <laughs> you wear uh, it well. She uh, after nineteen and sixteen, I wasn't here, but mm -hmm. Earl Kaufman drove the uh, to take the mail and freight and things up to Whitewater. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had to go to war, so Zaddy took that over. And they, I have a picture, if I had a thought, I could have got it out. I think I had still have well, a we'll picture look at of her standing by yes. the truck with the striped overalls, and it's put in the St. Louis Globe Democrat. We'll look at it later. About her driving. Yes, and movement. what she did, she sewed for people, so she'd take her sewing while they loaded the truck up there and work. Sewed for Mrs. Coffin. Mm -hmm. She would like the rest of her, did anything she could get to do. That's right. And then uh, when she wanted to fly the plane, that was the, you know, <laughs> both Earl Kaufman and Charlie Farrell and Earl Streeby and all, uh, told all the places they thought she would be wanting to start, uh, to not give her license, oh, not okay. try her out. Well, one time she was coming back from she always had to have someone with her, you see, until she got the license. That's right. And she stopped over here. There was a little airport between uh, Redlands and San Bernardino. And they forgot to tell them. She went in there and asked them, and they they took her out. And so in August of 52, I think it was, she was 65 years old. She got her pilot's license. That was in the 50s, you said? In 52? Uh -huh. In 1952, so she, she was she was 65. she was a grandmother and 65, and she got so it. she flew different planes. And Sister Lily, um, I was her first passenger. <laughs> we flew over to Apple Valley. Were you, were you frightened at all? Oh, I don't you, think so. You, had, uh, you know, somebody said, "Weren't you afraid?" And I said, "Well, you know, I believe in God, and if you end up there, you're in any place, so what?" <laughs> Why wouldn't That's he wonderful. take care of me up there? <laughs> also, you believed a lot in your sister. Huh? She, you believed in your sister, yes, too. Uh -huh. What but about... Uh, I, she never... I never wanted... She wanted to teach me, and I never wanted to uh, do it. Well, one one flyer in the family is <laughs> probably enough. Now, Lily was a hotel yes. owner. She, uh, she had four children. And uh, she came out here in 22, as I say, and she bought this uh, five-room bungalow, a living room and kitchen and uh, dining room and two bedrooms, with a bath between. And uh, so uh, she started in serving meals for people. And uh, then as she developed and got a little more, she began building uh, 
She made a two-story building out of it, and then built, she built it into a 38-room hotel and uh, cooked and served meals for 15 years herself. My goodness. So, and, and this was, it became a functioning hotel in, in, very, in the late 20s, would you say? Huh? Late, in the late 20s? Uh, well, she bought the uh, little bungalow in uh, 23, and she just started growing from then yeah. on. I don't remember what year she sold it. I was, yes, I was too busy with the end. There was 18 years in there that I knew more yes. people out of town than I knew in. That's right, because uh, you were running your own. I had to stay at home and take yes. care of things. Uh, how did people get around town when you first arrived? Uh, there weren't very many cars. There weren't any cars. How did you get around town? Yes. Well, it wasn't did, very did much, you, you know, you could walk to and through. You walked books. everywhere. Uh, did, did people ride horses? Did you see a lot of horses over the years? Is that, huh? was, did you see a lot of horses? Was that a uh, form, was that entertainment or recreation or did but people actually get around on, on they horses? They were only made by everybody, as I say, you know, at that time there wasn't, at that time there wasn't there really, I was only here, you know, uh, the, part of the two years. Right, and then we came back. So people generally walked. But later when we yeah. came back in the 20s, why? It was quite different. We bought a car and... Did you see a change when you came back after uh, the... Did you see a big change oh, in yes, the area? Oh, yes, quite a change. Uh, in, in what way? A lot of uh, new people and a lot of marriages. And <laughs> <laughs> quite a change. More buildings. More buildings. Were there still ten houses in the 20s? No, no, the 20s? ten houses began to disappear. Mrs. Fulton began to build frame buildings. I see. Yes, you saw more. All of them. Yeah. Of course, where Mrs. McManus lived, that was a, a building. Right. Regular buildings. Right. And there was a big... I don't know whether that place is still on the mountainside beyond for the, the uh, cemetery is. There was a mountain house, we called it. That uh, that uh, uh, well, her uh, sister, the white sisters owned, not not Cornelia, but what was the other one's name? Isabel, Franilla, the one that married the writer. Isabel, yeah, Isabel. Yes. They lived. There was a uh, big two-story house on the mountain. Yes. I don't, we called it the mountain house. I don't. I don't, know. I don't think so. I don't then the Madisons built homes near there. Yeah. And for the uh, tennis, tennis club, club and all is. Yes. Am I doing all right? You're doing <laughs> wonderfully well. He can't, do you, do you, he can't register that do on you, the. <laughs> do you want to take a break now? No, or not you, you, you do. You ready to? No, I I have a few more more questions to ask, and uh, you have a terrific memory for not only figures and dates and numbers, but for places where you lived. And if you would just tell us where you, you told us a little bit about where you've resided, but if you could that, tell well, us more. Well, after we came back in 19 and 19, and really, uh, I, uh, we bought two lots from my sister Zaddy up above where the uh, bus station is now the Greyhound bus station, right. and we built two houses on that. The first house we built was a little frame house that had a fireplace and a living room and a kitchen and a bath and two bedrooms, and we built it for $1,500. <laughs> Can you beat that? No. <laughs> are you warm? I'm fine. I don't say we could how, turn that. How are you doing? Are you comfortable? Oh, I'm fine. Okay. And uh, then, uh, we lived in that, and then we had, he was still carpenter, and I was still working, so we built another one uh, on the next lot, and rented that one, and then uh, sold the whole thing for $10,000. My goodness. Two homes. My goodness. And we had built up on Chino Drive. In the meantime, then, we had those rented. I see. And we built up on Cheeto Driver. Really, we had a uh, almost an acre up there. That would be a lovely, still yeah. almost a lovely and setting. Then in 19 and so you were 35, in, yes. while we built 
they started to build the end of part of it. So you Added were in many, many areas of, uh, of life in Palm Springs. You, were, you owned uh, real estate and hotels in a way, and you worked, and your husband was in construction, and you worked in the post office, so you, you've covered a lot of territory. And I taught school in Missouri. I know. You I want know. to know a funny story about that? Sure. <laughs> Someone said, you taught school? And I said, well, yes, didn't you know the story about the old couple taught school in Arkansas? And one day he was out and he came in and he said, oh, lady, we are ruined. They passed a law in Arkansas that you have to know how to read and write to teach school. She said, I don't know what you're worrying about. We'll just move over into Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people that was why I could teach school in Missouri. Well, I think you were very capable. <laughs> <laughs> but after, uh, after we went back in 19 and and uh, at the First World War, the uh, teacher was a man, and they uh, took him into the army, and they wanted me to finish out the term. I think there was five months left. So uh, I said, well, I'll have to go to the county seat and get a certificate because my certification had run out. I had So I went down, rode my horse, it was 18 miles down, took the examination, and then they sent me the certificate, I've got it in there. <laughs> sure. Anyway, uh, it wasn't bad. I averaged 93 percent and some of it was 98. Very I didn't good. know what I'd remembered being out of school three years or not. <laughs> well, it got well. a little tougher too. But you did not do any teaching in Palm Springs. But I didn't I? teach in California. Yeah. One time I thought I, <clears throat> Mr. Cree, who was a very mm -hmm. owned property here in Hollywood, super attended the schools. I thought once I'd talk to him about, and I thought, oh dear, I'll have to go to college and all, and I'd better go ahead and just work. Entertainment. You talked about potluck dinners. And oh, we each one bring something. Do you, you, know. do you remember uh, whose houses you went to? I think I usually visited? took a pie or a cake. I could ah. do that better than other food. <laughs> so you brought dessert. <laughs> do you remember some of the people that you, uh, that you visited and who visited you? Um, uh, well, uh, we sort of, uh, everyone was invited to the, when we had it in the auditorium, but mm -hmm. they were sort of a, well, there wasn't too many of us. The Hickses and the Hole Ditches and uh, and the uh, the Anacias and uh, Bunkers and Parkers and mm -hmm. and Catherine and a few more, don't you know, came uh -huh. to these. I don't think the White Sisters ever came to any of our doing. Uh huh. That's interesting. You played golf. Hmm? You played golf. Oh, I played golf. Yes. Yes. I wanted one. I that. enjoyed it. How we come to play golf, we lived right across from the golf course. Right. And the uh, super that took care of the golf course for Mr. O'Donnell, mm -hmm. he invited us to come over and play, so we got some clubs and went over. And you learned? You and your husband learned how to play? Did you Did you play a lot? Oh, not an awful lot, no. I was written up in the paper as making a hole in one. I, I know. That but was, it was uh, quite a different... That was hole it number wasn't five, quite a right? Hole in one. It was, <laughs> I think the reason he said it was I, I shot over the point of the hill where you couldn't even see right, the green number five. and landed right by the hole. <laughs> well, they, you got credit for that. I think that's wonderful. But that yeah. is accident. <laughs> you, you know, when you couldn't see where the hole was, that they did just have to be. Do you remember the Desert Circus? Oh, yes. Were you? Oh, I was in the first one. Let, tell me about that. Well, it wasn't anything uh, uh, anything great. I know, you see, I'd been doing uh, work of every kind and all, so they decided that I'd better be the housewife, so they fixed the truck and put a tub with, to wash and the washing board and oh, all that sort of thing. So I, I was in the parade as a washwoman. Ah. <laughs> of all the things that you've done, <laughs> did you enjoy it? Would you remember what year? when that was? I think the circus started in 1934. So. I know it was, uh, I don't remember the year, but it was, uh, of course it was quite a while after it began to be big. Is it during the early? I remember the first uh, sort of meeting that was up on the, uh, as you go up to talk with the 
canyon. Yes. They yes. met up there. And then came down to the town. And then every year it, it got bigger and, and bigger. I don't remember the year. A, a larger event. Do you remember any specific days? Uh, we just experienced, of course, a major earthquake. Do you remember the, uh, the earthquake? Yes. Uh, but uh, that no, was no uh, we were at the end, and it didn't shake uh, particularly hard there. Uh, but there were some windows broken out downtown and things just about like it was. This was this time, later, though. This was but 40, I 40 something. But uh, I couldn't remember the date, and then I saw it in the paper, and then I remembered. I knew we were at the end. I see. And, so it was later. But uh, there wasn't anything. Uh, you described a day, uh, I believe it, you, you said 1925, the hottest day. Oh, yes. That, um, and 19 and... July the 25th, I mean June the 25th, 1925, mm -hmm. it was 132. Mm -hmm. And why I remember that, <laughs> Mr. Parker was putting the tar paper on the roof of the O'Donnell house up on the hill, and his feet blistered through his shoes. And they said, what did you do? And I said, well, I filled the tub as full of colder water as I could get, and, uh, and we had a fan then, we had electricity then. And I, sa I said, I got my magazines, and." Set the fan, got in the tub, and laid there in red. <laughs> you created your own air conditioning. Do you remember air conditioning when you first? Uh, huh? Do you remember air conditioning when you for who first had it and when you first? Yes, yeah, so I, we didn't have it for a while. I don't believe we had any air conditioning and, until we built the dams in '35. We just, I, I'm sure we didn't. Did I can't you? remember any being put in on the, uh, uh, we went away every summer. I was going to ask you, where, we left, where did you usually go? Usually we left uh, that year that he happened to be here, the 20th, because Mr. Hicks was building that house yes. and he stayed. We usually left the first part of June and didn't come back till September. And where did you go? Oh, up to the northwest and one time we went to uh, east to New York and up. We went on the train and picked up a new car in Detroit and then drove down south. So we you had did, two other people with us. You did all of your traveling by train? Um, mostly by car. Oh, by car, yes. Yes, uh, Mr. Parker was, he wanted a good car and he traded cars every two or three years, so we had an, uh, always had a car in shape to go. When you would return, when you would leave uh, over the summer, was there anything that you had to do in, as far as your homes? Did you have to have someone look after them or lock up particularly, or was that not a problem in those days? When was that? When you, when you would leave for the summer, did you have to do anything to your house to Oh, no, we just it? closed it up. You just cl closed the door and left. Mm -hmm. Closed it up. A and that saw that the, everything was any light pictures of things were disconnected and and you didn't worry no about didn't what worry you about didn't it, have huh? to worry then you didn't have to worry about yes. vandalism those days right did you generally we, uh, town was yeah. filled with honest people <laughs> <laughs> you knew everyone yes so it, even at night you just left your doors open and uh and if you left during the day in those days you just Huh? Closed the door behind you. You didn't have to worry about locking up and Well, if we left, alarms. we locked the door. Yes, but, uh, but I mean, uh, but, uh, when you were there. Uh, we never thought about closing doors and windows and having to, somebody bother us. We, uh, we slept out at night on cots out in the yard. So, someone said to my husband one time, well, Parker, how are you making it through this recession? Uh, he said, well, we kept the wolf in the door, but a coyote run across the yard last <laughs> night, and that was true. One did oh work. We were still <laughs> up against the mountain, you see. That's uh, right. He said we didn't keep the coyote away. <laughs> it's almost like keeping a wolf in the door. I, I, can, I can remember the time we became a city when they voted for 19 and 38, right. and they held the meeting in the auditorium of the I Francis want to hear Stevens about School. that. That's and, wonderful. Uh, why I remember it so well is what Mrs. Kaufman said. She was against it. She said, gentlemen, what are you trying to do? Make this the biggest city in the world two blocks wide? She was against it because of uh, 
Well, the she just thought the. Uh, I guess she had lived in towns I had before they were cities. I didn't the expenses and all that sort of thing of it. Where we prepared. How, how did you feel? How did you and your oh, husband I feel? Oh, I voted against it, of course, and Mrs. Kaufman did. <laughs> And look what happened. <laughs> Do you remember, was there any, uh, you spoke about a, an extremely hot day. Do you remember snow? About what? Do, Do you remember snow here? Oh, ever? we had, yes. We had the two inches fell. Uh, and uh, I've got pictures of the little houses that are owned by Charles Chamberlain, who was a builder here, down uh, uh, where that, all that new building is. The, it was this side of the Palm Springs Hotel. They had, uh -huh. and the uh, it melted off quickly. But sure. uh, some of it stayed on two days on the north side. That was in uh, what year was that? Well, we've had snow since. They had here, some since then. Yes, but the, you're talking about but the not early as much days. As that. You're, yes, was that a, a big surprise to? Uh, yes, I think so. to everyone. <laughs> but. Uh, Well, is there anything, uh, anything else that, uh, that any particular date or event? Well, that I'm you've you've given us so much wonderful information. I don't want to miss anything. I, uh, any stories after, about people that that you might want to reveal? Huh? Any stories about people that you might want to reveal? No, I not not too. Much. <laughs> there were some little incidents and things, but uh, uh, I don't know that it should be written up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll leave that to your discretion. Mm -hmm. This has been a privilege, Henrietta. It really has. I'm sure you will be interviewed again when you're 100 years old, <laughs> and we'll have some more wonderful stories. Um, I would certainly like to thank you. Well, for this after interview. my husband passed away, he. He dropped dead of a heart attack in 1949. We were down at the beach. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kept the court and uh, kept it until 52. I sold it in 52. Then I... This is De Anza? De Anza. Yeah. But then, in the meantime, I'd bought in with some people a 20 room, 20 unit motel in Blythe. Oh. And then they wanted me to buy them out. So that was a mistake. I did. I bought them out and then I leased it. And then they gave up the lease, and then I sold it, and they didn't want to pay. So then I discounted it and sold it to Earl Streeby because he had a, an accountant and all that would take care of things. You kept returning to Palm Springs. I can't. Uh, you huh? kept you kept returning to Palm Springs. Oh, I didn't live over there. No, I know, time. but I'm I'm thinking during the First World War when you. Uh, you left yeah, we came back your, your husband Springs was not as anxious he, to he return. Wasn't, uh, he, he didn't like Palm Springs. He didn't want to come back, but I, uh, my whole family was living here. My father That's had a true. seventh cow dairy there for the big uh, publishing building is. Oh, your, your father owned uh -huh, the dairy? I had a dairy there, seven cows, and he peddled milk over town. And all that. When, when did your parents uh, come huh? to, when did your parents arrive? When did your parents come? They came, uh, they came out after we went back on the farm. I see. So this was in, the, in 1920. Uh -huh. You came back with your parents. Mm -hmm. and uh, they stayed one winter. I think they stayed the winter of 19 and 16. And then they came out here every winter. I see. I see. Uh, and, they, and they stayed here uh, uh, for their... Yes, they live here. Uh -huh. Mother passed away in 31, and uh, father lived to be past 93 years old. And he passed away in 48. I see. To show you the difference in care, he stayed with... The, there's a little place called Silvern Acres between Banning and Beaumont. Uh -huh. Yes. And a nurse had a house in the next room, and she, and he went up there and lived with her, and had nursing care and good care. And uh, uh, in August, before he was 93 in September, he dug up and made a garden for her. Mm. 
then he, he had his memory all the time too. My sister Lily's birthday was on the 16th of December <laughs> and uh, we went up to visit Father. That was just a week before he passed and he was, she said, Dad, you know, my birthday was the other day and I was so and so. She gave him some ridiculous age. <laughs> And he said, with a twinkle in his eye, he said, yes, I know you did. I thought about it, and you were so-and-so, and he told her what her age was. Yes. He kept, he, he, yeah. his memory was good. Well, it's a wonderful, wonderful gift, and uh, you've been extremely helpful. I also want to thank Sally McManus hmm? for, I want to thank Sally McManus for introducing us oh, and well, doing such wonderful research and she, for, uh, for making this interview possible. She's uh, quite a good... Yeah, isn't she? Yes, she is. And uh, and Jeremy Crawford. They were up here not too long ago after I got out of the hospital. You remember Jeremy? I mean, you, Jeremy. you you've seen and Jeremy? They'd had a council meeting or something, and, and Jeremy had told them off, and I had to laugh. <laughs> he objected to something they were doing. Was this recently, you mean? Or? Just, the other, just a few days ago. So I told yeah. Sally, I said, yeah, I heard about it. Well, you, you've been a part of Palm Springs history, oh, and yes. you are still a part of Palm Springs. Uh, I was had charge of my father's uh, court before, uh, after he didn't have the dairy anymore, he built some bungalows. And Mr. and Mrs. Crocker, after Prince, he married, came, and I rented a house. I see. To them. I see. Yes. In 33, I believe. Yeah, and you, what were they like? You, do you remember? Oh, they were, of course, they were not real young people then. <laughs> I don't think either of them is too well now, though, from what Jeremy told me. Okay. Well, you, you keep in touch, and that's important. Okay. Well, thank you, Henrietta. Thank you again. Well, I hope I've not made too much. You can cut out what you don't like. Well, we'll not cut out a thing. <laughs> Nothing. This was perfect. Thank you. You're an inspiration. Well, it, it, it's as true as I can remember it. That's, then that's truth. That is truth. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I've never thought there was in any advantage in lying or cheating. <laughs> I was taught that the, very young by my mother. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you.